looking for an upset of number 15 Gonzaga West Coast Conference action for you from the Child Center as the Zags who trail St. Mary's by a game in the West Coast Conference standings. St. Mary's a perfect 8-0, Gonzaga 7-1. Portland, who began conference play 0-6, has won their last two and trying to keep that momentum going into tonight. Along with Karan Butler, Roxy Bernstein with you from Portland. The Pilots in the white, the Zags in the navy blue, and a turnover for Portland to start tonight. Here's Josh Perkins at transition three. That's definitely a, a welcoming sign for the Zags. You know, Perkins getting his rhythm early in the game. And that's a clear case of KYP. You know your personnel. You got to run him off that shot. A good start for Gonzaga. Three freshmen in the starting lineup for Portland. As Josh McSwiggin answers for the Pilots. McSwiggin, a 46% three-point shooter. He's a guy that can heat up rather quickly. Saw him just a week ago at LMU, and he struggled with his shooting, but he showed that he flashes that he's more than capable. The spin move by Killian Tilly rattles out, and the rebound secured by Philip Hartwich, the 7-2 senior from Cologne, Germany, for the Pilots. And a weave outside, JoJo Walker to a fellow freshman, Marcus Shaver, Jr., and also Tahiro Diabate, the three freshmen for the Pilots. Shot clock rolling down. And JoJo Walker throws it away. Second turnover by Portland. That's Mark Few. Last year was the National Coach of the Year. Took Gonzaga, of course, as you know, all the way to the National Championship game. And he has the best winning percentage among all active coaches in college basketball at nearly 82%. Roxy, can you repeat that? <laughs> Nearly 82% of the games he has won as the Gonzaga head coach. And that's all of college basketball. Just an amazing accomplishment by Mark Few. On the drive, off the window, and in from Zach Norvell, Jr., the redshirt freshman from Chicago for Gonzaga. Well, who got off to a little bit of a slow start to the season has really been coming on the last month or so. And he's a volume scorer. You know, we've seen him in some of the shoot arounds just a couple weeks back. Seeing him knock down the shot and, and engage a rhythm, once he gets started, it's kind of hard to cool him down. JoJo Walker, fade away in the lane. And the rebound, there is Norvell. Here come the Bulldogs. The lob for Killian Tilly. Norvell traveled and Gonzaga a giveaway. Terry Porter, the head coach of the Portland Pilots, in his second season, the former NBA All-Star. In fact, 17 years. Karan is a player in the NBA, and he's 14th all-time in assists. Just amazing. You know, uh, you know, went to you know the University of Lacrosse, a guy that you know, a uh, great veteran guy, great leader. You know, on and off the court, it's great to see him at the helm over here at the University of Portland. Marcus Shaver from the elbow. And the rebound tipped out. Here comes Silas Melson for Gonzaga. Melson a deep three. And Silas Melson, who hit seven threes the last time these teams met, went for a career-high 23, nails that one. And you know, you know, speaking of Nelson, looks like he got a little extra pop to his stuff. You know, looking over here at the scoreboard and, you know, eyeing us over here, letting us know that it's going to be one of those games for him. Well, he is a local kid. He's from Portland, went to Jefferson High School here in Portland. So you know it's a big deal for him coming home. Those are always one of the special games, you know, when you return home and you make shots and big moments, you know, you just try to ride that momentum and make it a special night. Corey Kispert comes in for Melson in the lineup for Gonzaga. Kispert, the 6'6 freshman from Edmonds, Washington. Philip Hartwich goes underneath, rejected by Killian Tilly. Kispert off on that three, the rebound, hustling for it, and a foul will go against Gonzaga on Zach Norvell Jr. 
You look at this block by Tilly. He did an excellent job. Couldn't have blocked that with his right hand. You know, avoided the contact with the body by blocking that with his left hand. Really good block right there by Tilly. Which has trouble on the perimeter. JoJo Walker, the kick out, Marcus Shaver, corner three. And the rebound, Corey Kispert for the Zags. And a foul, a block is called on JoJo Walker of Portland. Shaver is definitely getting his opportunities early in, the, in, in this offense. And, you know, coach is looking for him to stay aggressive. You know, he's encouraging all these shots and these opportunities that he's taking. Here's Norvell, the lob to Jonathan Williams. Williams goes to work across the key. Left the running hook short. Killian Tilly, the offensive rebound. Fade away from Perkins. And the tip in. Let's see who got it. May have been Jonathan Williams. Hey, you know, when situations like that happen, Roxy, you, that's the only time I encourage guys to be a little selfish and raise your hand. I'll take that, too. And a timeout for Portland as Gonzaga out to a 10-3 lead to start the game. So a good start for Gonzaga on the road, which Gonzaga has done a tremendous job of over the years winning on the road. Let's be checking. Take a look at the WCC standings. And Gonzaga comes into tonight with that loss last week at home to St. Mary's, a game behind the Gales as St. Mary's hosting BYU tonight in Moraga. And then Portland, who started WCC play 0-6, but they've won their last two, trying to get that momentum going here at home and looking for the upset of number 15, Gonzaga, here tonight. Along with former UConn All-American and NBA champion Karan Butler, Roxy Bernstein with you. And Gonzaga off to another good road start. Yeah, they just doing a great job of preparing. You know, and preparation is key. You're talking about film sessions, shoot around. These guys take that extremely serious. And you see the communication on the defensive end, not hanging their hat on the offensive side of things, but defensively, they're doing it night in and night out. And that's the collectiveness that you got to have, especially going to, on the road trying to get a quality win. Defense always travels. And Portland is one of five for the field. And Gonzaga's defense causing them some problems, already forcing a couple of turnovers from the pilots. That's exactly what it is, like we touched on. You can hang your hat on defense night in and night out. You can't, you can't rely on the offensive end of the floor, and that's why Gonzaga continues to be successful as a program because they have guys that buy into that system and that philosophy. Gonzaga has dominated this series as of late. They've won nine straight from Portland, including earlier this year. They won back on January 11th at the Kennel, 103 to 57 as Silas Melson at 23 career high to lead Gonzaga in that game he had seven threes Rui Hachimura hit 20 off the bench as Gonzaga hit 13 threes in the game they shot 52 percent from the field they scored 50 points in the paint in that game against Portland the pilot shot just 30 percent that's what you call clicking on all cylinders right there and a whistle off the ball, and it's an offensive foul on Tahiro Diabate of Portland is first. Terry Porter, his team off to a little bit of a sluggish start here. But they do have three freshmen on the floor, and Diabate one of them. Double team in the post, Silas Melson spots up. Rattles out the three and the rebound, Corey Kispert for the Zags. Through the hands of Jonathan Williams and a Gonzaga turnover, here come the Pilots and JoJo Walker. Walker tries to turn the corner, gets to the basket, a quick burst, but then threw up a wild shot and the loose ball chased down by Josh Perkins for Gonzaga. Kispert in transition to the basket. And he goes right at the shot blocker and gets it in. Really good observation right there by Kispert. Just getting the ball on the left side of the floor, using his body, showing the ball, and then protecting it with the easy two off the glass. And Kispert, who'd been scoreless the last two games, gets an early bucket. And it's Gonzaga by nine. You, know, you see the Portland players, you know, really relying on their ability 
with the ball trying to create where with the Zags they're coming up the court moving the ball side to side and getting exactly what they want. Jojo Walker off balance. Only one to shoot and it's a turnover on Portland. Mm -hmm. Life is difficult for Portland on the offensive end. You know what? They're trying to figure it out on the offensive end. And, you know, Coach Porter is doing an excellent job in trusting his young talent. But at the same time, you're seeing a, a well-ran offense in the Zags and what they do moving the ball side to side. And plus, they're locking him up defensively. Rui Hachimura in for Gonzaga, the 6'8 sophomore from Sendai, Japan. Here he is, and he walked. Third Gonzaga turnover. Mark Hughes' team making a short trip down from Spokane here to Portland, where they have won 20 of the last 21 from the pilots here in this building. I think that turnover by Hachimura right there was a little forced. You know, just coming in off the bench, he probably would have shot that with a couple of up and backs on the court. But he was trying to get an easy opportunity. Inside, Philip Bartlett's the slam for Portland. Excellent job of penetrating and dumping it off for Hartwood. The crowd on hand here at the Child Center, trying to get into it now for the dunk by Hartwood, is Corey Gispert missing a three. I should point out, as you would expect, there are also a lot of Gonzaga people here at the Child Center tonight. Hartwood's size and presence inside is going to be crucial during the duration of this game. He's the all-time leading shot blocker in the history of Portland basketball. And a foul before the shot from Melson. And it's on Hartwich trying to get through a screen. It's the first on the big man. You talk about the penetration right there by Schaefer and just dumping it off right there for Hartwich. You know, finishing strong with the left hand. And you talked about Roxy, his, you know, his, his prowess around the rim on the defensive end. That's seven blocks against LMU. I counted eight. He probably got one taken away from him, but definitely seven. You're saying in that they shortchanged him. Yeah, they definitely shortchanged him. Second turnover by Rui Hachimura. Marcus Shaver darts up the floor and gets the bucket. First points for the freshman from Phoenix, who leads Portland in scoring in conference play. And that's the type of pace Portland is going to have to play with to compete with the Zags. you got to run them and force the tempo as much as possible. Five-point lead for Gonzaga. Silas Melson. And the rebound, Diabate and the Pilots. Franklin Porter comes in for Portland, and a foul on the drive, and it's going to be called against Josh Perkins of Gonzaga. And Perkins in disbelief. And you see that drive by Franklin Porter right there. He's more than capable of being that necessary spark on a consistent basis, you know, for the Portland Pilots. Saw him last week against LMU. He came in, he showed a lot of versatility and a lot of poise on the offensive end. The broad shoulders, physical, as Nick Swiggin airballs a three, and it's pulled down by Jakob Larson and Gonzaga. Five-point lead for the Zags. We welcome those of you just joining us. The Child Center in Portland is Zach Norvell Jr. has seven after nailing that three in Gonzaga out to a 15-7 lead on the Portland Pilots. West Coast Conference action for you on this Thursday night from the Pacific Northwest along with Karan Butler. Roxy Bernstein with you as the Zags trying to keep their road winning streak going. They've won 19 consecutive road conference games. Have not lost in over two years on the road in league action since they lost to St. Mary's back in January of 2016. But the Zags, even though a little sloppy, they're up eight on Portland. 11.32 to go first half here at the Child Center. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Volkswagen Tiguan, the not-so-compact, compact SUV, and 
Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. In Portland for West Coast Conference action for you on this Thursday night is number 15 Gonzaga leading the Portland Pilots. 15-7, Portland just three of 12 from the floor. They have four turnovers. And Gonzaga also a plus six in the rebounding margin. And on the road, Gonzaga has been an incredible story. Yes, they win anywhere, but they really win on the road in league play as they've won 19 consecutive road conference games coming into tonight. The last time they lost a road conference game, you got to go back to January of 2016 when they lost at St. Mary's. As Gonzaga trying to keep that going here tonight, far and away the longest active streak in college basketball in terms of consecutive road conference wins. The next team up is at seven, and actually two teams tied with seven consecutive road wins. New Mexico State in the WAC and Montana in the Big Sky. But 19 consecutive road wins in conference play for Gonzaga. And I ask you again, Karam, what makes a good road team? Hey, it's, it's, it's not done. It's not done by coincidence. And we talked to Coach Mark Few, and we see the preparation and shoot around and film and holding each other accountable and togetherness and consistency and all these things and in these areas. You know, it takes all that commitment to come on the road in a hostile environment, togetherness, to walk away with a quality win. Look, they're dominant at home, too, at the kennel. We know that. But is there something about when you're on the road, sometimes you can play a little bit better? You know what? When everybody's against you and adversity strikes, you know, it's, it's up to everyone that traveled in on that charter plane, that rolled in on that bus, that's in that locker room, that togetherness, to find a way to propose your will on the game and walk away with a quality win. Here comes DeMarcus Tyson for Portland. Eight point lead for the Zags. They've led by as many as nine as Franklin Porter off balance. And last touch by Gonzaga, they give the ball to Portland. Also, Karan, when you're, you're on the road, it's, you mentioned it's kind of like the us against the world mentality, but there's no distractions in terms of the hotel, you're focused, you're as one group going to and from to get ready for the game. If you're if you're wired like that, and they are because that's what that culture is all about, it's nothing like getting a quality win on the road. You know, going in and just silencing the crowd and walking away with a quality win. Marcus Shaver lost the handle. Here come the Zags and Silas Melson in transition. Blocked from behind, but a foul. And Melson will go to the stripe. And the foul is called against Demarcus Tyson of Portland. His first. And it's Silas Melson, a 91% free throw shooter to the stripe for Gonzaga. First free throw is attempted by either side tonight. To the Portland native, Melson misses the first, so a 91% are missed. One more coming. He had made 17 straight free throws until missing there. Well, you know, Roxy, we didn't give him the analyst jinx right there. I waited. Yeah, you definitely waited. Because on Twitter, Gonzaga people were mad at me when <laughs> I mentioned it before Killy and Tilly shot free throws, the game we had down at Pepperdine. Then, of course, he missed, and it was my fault. So I waited, and now that he missed, I can say it. He gets the second one. So he's made 18 of his last 19. He got a little excited, you know what I mean? Like stepping up, he's 90 percent from the foul line he's back home he want to have an out-of-body performance you know you can see it so a little anxiety right there probably on that first free throw and the corner sent back by Kispert when you return to your hometown like Nelson is doing when you were in the NBA you go back to Milwaukee what oh, wow. was it like for you? It was the best feeling ever because, you know, I've always purchased about 100 to 150 <laughs> tickets. And, you well, know. I'm sure Silas did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would always purchase like 100 to 150 tickets, and I would just oh, have some of the best yeah. games of my career. I all, should have been friends with you back then. All my career highs came to Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 40 points a few times. Really? Though. Absolutely. Roxy just took it out on the bucks. Roxy, that's what you call in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> Second foul in Philip Hartwood, so he needs to sit for a bit. As Gonzaga's match their largest lead. Here's Killian Tilly inside. 
And the jump hook, that was pretty mm -hmm. from Tilly. A real solid move by Tilly, just taking advantage of his size right there. You know, getting the feel of him on his back and then turning baseline for the easy jump hook. And a soft touch for his first points. Portland needs to get a bucket. They've got to stay within striking distance here. Marcus Tyson on the drive. Off the window, and Tyson, the senior, with his first points. He's known as a three-point shooter, but there he went to the basket. Killian Tilly missed the three, and Josh Perkins gets the long rebound. Jakob Larson, and a foul will get him to the line. If you see Tilly right here, He's doing a great job of initiating the contact as the offensive player and creating that space where he can have the easy jump hook for two. Jakob Larson at the line, a 69% foul shooter. That's your freshman. Rattles in the first. He's been scoreless in the last three games for Gonzaga. He gets that first one. And some foul difficulty for Portland as Larson at the line. Diabate just picked up his second foul. Gillian Tilly, the offensive rebound. Josh Perkins way off on the three, and there's Corey Kispert, the kick out. But Diabate with two fouls, and Hartwich has two fouls. It's Kispert and one. That was just a strong, strong move right there by Kispert. Just doing a great job of taking the baseline and finishing with the contact. That's three defenders coming over from the pilots, and they're not able to stop him, and they're definitely going to need some size back in there. That's where Hartridge is definitely much needed. Second foul on Demarcus Tyson. As Malcolm Porter, the other son of Terry Porter, so both of his kids, Malcolm and Franklin, on the floor. Kispert rattles the free throw out, and Diabate the rebound. It's a family reunion in Portland, baby. Got Terry Porter coaching. Franklin Porter, Malcolm Porter on the floor for the Pilots. Malcolm Porter, the runner. He's going in there extremely fearless. You know, every time he gets downhill, he's not worrying about the shot blocking capability of the Zags. He's just going right up in traffic. And been extremely fortunate by not getting it thrown back and knocking down the shots. He didn't play the last couple of games, was dealing with some back spasms. As Corey Kispert missing the three out of bounds, it belongs to Portland. As the pilots have been a little bit banged up, but everybody good to go tonight as Porter missed the last couple of games with back spasms. Malcolm Porter. And there's a look at Franklin Porter, and also Rashad Jackson is available tonight. He's been dealing with an ankle issue as of late. Ten-point lead for the Zags on the road in Portland looking for the 20th consecutive road conference win. Malcolm Porter and one. We just touched on that, Roxy. We talked about Porter getting into the paint and taking advantage of his quickness and speed and angles and, and going there with a fearful attitude, not worrying about the shot blocking capability of the Zags and finishing for the easy two again. And Malcolm Porter, a 68% foul shooter, the redshirt freshman from here in Portland, gets a three-point play and makes it a seven-point game. That was on Corey Kispert. You see the defense right there, the full-court zone. Perkins launches for three. Second three for Josh Perkins who's made the most threes in the WCC this season, 45% outside the arc. Portland tried to do their best job defensively to, to stop them and drop back into the zone, but that wasn't enough. Perkins took advantage of that slot three and knocked it straight down. Travel on Franklin Porter. The Zags up 10 on the road in Portland. How about the N1 by the big guy? He making money moves out here, baby. One single day, two power conferences, 10 games with new stars, familiar legends, and epic matchups, all for bragging rights. The Big 12 SEC Challenge on ESPN, this Saturday.
with the SEC Big 12 Challenge coming up this weekend. And Trey Young, over 30 points per game. And Karan, we hear so much about the comparisons. His game is a lot like Steph Curry's. What do you see? We see a lot of similarities. And, you know, the freedom for him to be able to create and utilize his cre creativity with the basketball, without the basketball. You know, um, I think he's going to be a guy that's going to really excel at the next level. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing him just, you know, continue to progress. A guy that has no ceilings. Josh Perkins, a couple of threes, the point guard for the Zags. Fourth year junior. Outside of Denver. Inside to Killian Tilly, going to work and a kick out. Perkins. Third three for Josh Perkins. He's really stroking the ball extremely well. And a good groove as Gonzaga leads it by 13. It's their largest lead. Franklin Porter, corner three. And the rebound, there's Jonathan Williams for the Zags. Inside seven minutes to play first half. At the Child Center in Portland. Perkins lobs for Tilly. Recovers it. And the floater by Tilly and Tilly. That's a great job of Tilly using his versatility, putting the ball on the floor, and this shot putting it over for the easy two over Porter. Eight straight for Gonzaga, and they're up 15. Tough shot and a foul called on Rui Hachimura as Demarcus Tyson will shoot three. 9 of 11 from the line this season for Demarcus Tyson, the senior. Second in Portland history in threes. I know that was a tough call right there, and it was the right call, but Hachimura, you know, as he goes on, he's going to have to think that out a little better. Tip off your weekend with our star-studded NBA Friday matchup. The Rockets battle the Pelicans. The Beard and CP3 take on Boogie in the Brow. In the Big Easy. Our coverage begins NBA countdown at 7 on ESPN and the ESPN app. The Rockets and the Pelicans. What did you think of the All-Star draft today with LeBron and Steph choosing sides? I cannot wait for All-Star weekend. Some of the talent that's a symbol on some of these rosters, we're talking about LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Giannis, better known as the Greek Freak. Any snubs in your eyes? Uh, you know what? Uh, one of the guys that I really wanted to see make it because he's just having one of those type of years was Lou Williams. You know, he's just, he's cooking on all cylinders from an offensive standpoint. And he's a guy that, you know, it's not really appreciated. I saw that with Jamal Crawford being a three-time sixth man of the year recipient. And, you know, um, Lou Williams having that, that special type of year this year. Here come the Zags as Demarcus Tyson missed the three. Silas Nelson with a three. For Gonzaga, his second three. A little home cooking for Nelson. And the Zags have doubled up the Pilots. Gonzaga doing a good job of denying Josh McSwiggin. Pull up jumper. And Demarcus Tyson with six to lead the Pilots. Well, they have guys that's more than capable of creating their own shot. They're a smaller group, but they rely on their versatility, and they got a lot of guys that's like sizes, so they got to take advantage of that speed and quickness on the offensive end. Long three from Perkins. Offensive rebound and a putback by Killian Tilly. <laughs> Seem like the Portland Pilots, you know, just really get caught ball watching a lot when when the offensive uh, presence of the Zags, when the ball go up, they have to pursue the ball. First hit a body, then pursue the basketball. Philip Hartwich back in the game with his two fouls. The floater by Tyson Short and the rebound secured by Melson and Gonzaga. Here's Killian Tilly. 
Missed the baseline jumper and the rebound, Josh McSwiggin and Portland. Pilots just 33% shooting and one of five from three and now an offensive foul for an illegal screen on Josh McSwiggin of Portland. We're gonna have to get a replay of that one right there. You know what, I thought that was an excellent job of Perkins, you know, really selling that. You know, getting that contact and just, you know, I think he's getting ready to play at the next level. He's already preparing for the flopping. <laughs> <laughs> First foul on McSwiggin as Perkins lost the handle, the right to Jonathan Williams. Nice pass by Williams to Killian Tilly for the spike. That's just togetherness right there, and that, that play happened in walkthrough today. You know, like knowing the presence of the team, knowing how they're going to defend you. And, you know, Jonathan Williams did an excellent job. Not a good job, but an excellent job of drawing the defender and catching a dive and Tilly to the basket for the easy two. This is what you call the ultimate throwdown. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Caramel M&M's. We're making caramel fun. And Angry Orchard Hard Cider, naturally refreshing. Gonzaga's doubled up. Portland here at the Child Center on the bluff. 36-18, number 15, Gonzaga with the lead. Saturday on ESPN, the fifth annual Big 12 SEC Challenge. Freshman phenom Trey Young leads number 12 Oklahoma against Alabama at 2.15 Eastern. Then at 4.30, it's Texas A&M and number five Kansas from Fog Allen Fieldhouse. And at seven, Kentucky and number seven West Virginia in Morgantown. All three games are also available on the ESPN app. If you're out and about, like I'll be on Saturday, I'll have it on the app. I know where I'll be watching Saturday. On the couch? Trey Young. He is putting on a show. He is so fun to watch. As they were up here in Portland, took part in the PK-80, which both of these teams participated in. Thanksgiving weekend. Gonzaga had some thrilling games in the PK-80 here in Portland. Shot clock at five. No look pass to Philip Hartwich. They got to go up. JoJo Walker for three. And it goes off the top of the backboard, and Zach Norvell Jr. comes down with it for Gonzaga. Gonzaga's won 19 consecutive road conference games. Trying to make it 20 here tonight as a reach and foul against Portland will put Killian Tilly at the line. And it's on Marcus Shaver of the Pilots. Ninth team foul, so one and one for Tilly, who is an 84% foul shooter. Terry Porter's got a young team. Nine newcomers on this Portland roster. Only four returning letter winners from last year, one of the youngest teams in college basketball. And, and you know, Coach Porter gets it. You know, this, this is all about developing these guys and playing against a team like Gonzaga. You know, you have to go through these growing pains and adversity, and they're competing. They're still fighting. They're showing a lot of fight, and they're believing and following his message and his leadership on the sideline. JoJo Walker, the freshman, darts to the basket. First points for Walker from Puerto Rico. Really an unbelievable move right there. Excellent drive, just turning that corner and not veering out, but going downhill, getting to the paint, and finishing strong for the two. Nelson fading away. And the rebound grabbed by Demarcus Tyson and the Pilots. Here's Shaver bursting to the basket and Marcus Shaver with a couple of quick buckets. And a timeout for Mark Few. And Gonzaga is Marcus Shaver trying to ignite this Pilots team. They're down 14 on their home floor to number 15, Gonzaga. Gonzaga's led by as many as 18. They're up by 14 right now on the road at Portland. 
Bags, one of the highest scoring teams in college basketballs. They put up more than 88 points per game, which is fourth best in the country. They're also fourth in field goal percentage. They shoot it as a club. Better than 51%. Killian Tilly off the feed from Jonathan Williams, and that's why they're so successful in the offensive end with passing and plays just like that. Excellent out of bounds play draw up by Coach Mark Few coming in and giving exactly what you wanted a paint score. And Tilly did a great job of, you know, showing the ball, knowing that Hartwich was not going to follow. Philip Hartwich answers for Portland and will get an and one free throw. Look at, the side, look at the execution by the Zags right here. Ball to ball movement, side to side. Tilly doing an excellent job of just getting right to the paint, both feet in the paint, showing the ball on Hartwick. And then Hartwick kind of come back to redeem himself on the offensive end, diving right down the paint and finishing with the contact for the easy two. Second foul on Melson. As Rui Hachimura comes back for him. Philip Hartwich is only a 29% free throw shooter. 29%. So what you're saying is we're hoping for somewhat of a miracle. And we and got one. That's prayer answered up the heel of the rim. He on the landline. Tell him what you want. <laughs> Do you believe in miracles? We just saw one. <laughs> Well, the Winter Olympics are coming up, right? <laughs> Final two minutes of the first half. Tilly feeds to Rui Hachimura. First points for Hachimura tonight. Hachimura is a pure athlete. Catching that ball in the paint like that and not taking too much time to gather itself. Most guys would have took a one or a two count to gather themselves, then go up. He just immediately exploded with the ball right at his chest where he caught it at and finished for the easy two. Second foul on Rui Hachimura. Marcus Shaver will go to the line for Portland. One and one for Shaver, the freshman from Phoenix who originally signed to go to UCSB. But then Bob Williams was fired by UC Santa Barbara and when that job opened up, Marcus Shaver reopened his recruiting chose to come up here to Portland which has been a great destination for him you know um, it complements all his strengths and capabilities on the ball court Saber hits both he started now the last three games after coming off the bench the previous five starting the previous eight to that and again he leads Portland in scoring in conference play and now as a starter, he's taking full advantage of the opportunities as a starter and showing a lot of leadership out there on the court as well. Corner three, Killian Tilly, and Marcus Tyson just threw his hands up. What am I supposed to do? That's what you call good D, better offense. 13 for Tilly to lead everybody. Gonzaga is led by as many as 18. Marcus Tyson on the move. The pump got the D to fly by, and Nick nails the three. Just, just look at the fight, you know, of the pilots. You know, they're not going away. They, they, they fight through that adversity. Um, Corey Kispert answers for Gonzaga. And the Zag's not going away either. <laughs> Kispert now with seven off the bench. Portland can play for the last shot of the half. Final eight seconds. Marcus Shaver turns the corner, gets inside, missed the scoop. Rui Hachimura will let the first half clock run out. And Gonzaga leading by as many as 18 here in the first half. A 16-point halftime lead led by Killian Tilly. 13 points for the native of France to lead Mark Hughes' squad. As the Zags shot 55% from the floor in the first half, making 8 of 16 from three, and holding Portland a 41% shooting. 46-30 Zags at the half. Coming up, we'll send you to ESPNU Halftime Report.
Starting the second half in Portland at the Child Center is number 15, Gonzaga, looking for their 20th consecutive road conference win. Up on the Portland Pilots, the students trying to get into it here at the Child Center. A good crowd on this Thursday night. West Coast Conference action for you from the Pacific Northwest along with Karan Butler. Roxy Bernstein with you. It's Gonzaga led by as many as 18 in the first half. As the Zags go right inside to start the second half with Zach Norvell Jr. He has nine. Killian Tilly leads all scorers for the Zags with 13. Demarcus Tyson off the bench, nine to lead Portland. So the Zags have matched their largest lead of the night. Loose ball picked up by Killian Tilly inside. Here come the Bulldogs. Corner three, Norvell in transition. The offensive rebound, Jonathan Williams gets it to Killian Tilly in a reach in and Marcus Shaver, his second. Actually, they're going to call it not on Shaver, but on Tahiro Diabate of Portland, his third. He definitely was going up on that play right there, that possession. And the officials correct the call. It's Steve Olson working with Sean Lehigh and Courtney Holmes tonight here in Portland. Tilly 0 of 1 at the line and 84% on the year. And now he's 0-2. Portland trying their own little curtain of distraction, which Arizona State has made famous. The students on the baseline behind that curtain. See if it works for them. Not this time. <laughs> uh, got a little medieval times thing going on with the swords and everything. They'll try anything <laughs> to get their opponents off their game. Largest lead of this ball game for the Zags. Let it by 16 at the half. Philip Hartwich with the left hand. And he's having a nice night offensively. That's seven for the seven foot two Hartwich. Well, Hart was shown flashes, you know, with his back to the basket to hit the jump hook with the left hand or the right hand. Known for his defense, known for his shot blocking ability, is Diabate to steal. And Zach Norville Jr. hobbling a bit, coming back down the floor for Gonzaga's Josh McSwiggin draws contact, will head to the line. You know what I loved about that play right there by McSwiggin? is that he he didn't he didn't settle for the shot you know a guy that haven't had the volume opportunities in the first half of this ball game you know he imposed his will on the game right there and drove the ball got the contact now he's going to get a rhythm at the foul line first on Killian Tilly McSwiggin an 83 percent foul shooter and one more coming for the England native who originally went to Utah and he sat out his freshman year as the NCAA would not clear him for competition. So he sat out, was in eligible to play at UTEP, and then went to a junior college in Wyoming last year at Casper Junior College. Then transferred here to Portland. And Bob Cantu was on the staff right there, the assistant coach for the pilots in the middle of your screen there. Bob was at UTEP with Tim Floyd, got McSwiggin to go there. And then on the alley -oop pass to Jonathan Williams. Bob Cantu got him to come here when he was leaving junior college. Talking about taking the elevator up and going to the 12th floor and leaving somebody at the 10th. Jonathan Williams clears. Believe it or not, Williams, those were his first points of the night. Zach Norvell for three. And there's Killian Tilly in the offensive glass. Is Gonzaga one of the best rebounding teams in college basketball in Portland? One of the worst in terms of rebound margin. A lob to Killian Tilly, plus one. You, know, you look at the Zags in the pick and roll. They're utilizing this, keeping somebody up high in the slot to make that pass. If you see the dunk, the throwdown by Williams. And then again, the pick and roll set again, the high low with Tilly rolling right to the basket, finishing for the two with the contact. Four fouls in Diabate. As Tilly gets the N1. 17 now for Tilly. And the Gonzaga lead is up to 20. Yeah. 
Here's Philip Hartwich going inside. The drop step. Impressive move by Philip Hartwich. Roxy, we touched on it. You know, Hartwich has, has shown, you know, flashes and, and shown that he's more than capable of not just scoring with the left hand, but the right hand as well, as you saw in that possession. And a foul called. And it's on Philip Hartwich. His third. Already the four team found the pilots here in the second half. If you're the pilots, you do not want to lose the presence of Hartwich on the defensive end of the floor. So Terry Corn will have to pull out to Hiro Diabate with his four fouls. And the first appearance tonight of 6'11 sophomore Joseph Smoyer went to Franklin High School here in Portland. Hasn't played much as of late. That didn't play at all in the last three games for the Pilots. Loose ball as Josh Perkins mishandled it and threw it away. And a turnover committed by Gonzaga. You know, I saw Smoyer, you know, light up as Coach Porter called his name off the bench. You know, he dusted the dust off the Nikes and hopped up and checked in. <laughs> JoJo Walker from deep, fouled on a three by Jonathan Williams. And Walker will head to the line for Portland. Three shots for JoJo Walker. He started all 21 games here in his freshman season for Portland, leads the Pilots in assists and steals. And he's shooting three. 73 percenter. He's from Puerto Rico and early in the season an exhibition game that Portland hosted against Eastern Washington where they raised money for hurricane relief from Puerto Rico as the University of Portland was able to raise over three thousand dollars for Portland and or for Puerto Rico where Jojo Walker is from. So it meant a lot to Walker. And his family actually came out from Puerto Rico for the PK-80 Thanksgiving weekend, and he hits all three free throws here. Just amazing. You know, people coming together out of his finals right there. That's what it's all about. Alley-oop to Kelly and Tillin. They're utilizing that, that play to the fullest, and they're operating, they're getting into the pick and roll, and the big is continuing to die to the paint, making himself available for the, the line. Josh McSwiggin trying to assert himself for the Pilots here. 15 point game. Zach Marvell inside is Jonathan Williams. And the flip up and in from the senior from Memphis, Tennessee. Most touch for Hartwich and an offensive foul and a good sell job from Jonathan Williams who drew the contact from Philip Hartwich who just picked up his fourth foul. Philly did an excellent job right here of sending that pick. That's what you call a slip screen. And going up high for the two. Throwing it down. Watch your head. Well, last Thursday night at the Kennel, it was Jock Landale and Gonzaga, or in St. Mary's rather, stunning Gonzaga. This three at the horn off the mark from Rui Hachimura. And the St. Mary's Gales winning at the Kennel. So St. Mary's unbeaten in WCC play. The Zags a game behind. Here's a look at the last eight seasons in the West Coast Conference. The domination from Gonzaga with a little bit of St. Mary's sprinkled in. When you see, you know, teams are really starting to perform at a higher level. But, you know, the Zags are still the, the standard in the WCC. Mark you clearly. They set the standard in this conference. 19th season at the head coach of the Zags. 29th overall for Mark Few. Won at least 20 games, had been at the NCAA tournament in each of his first 18 seasons. No reason to think it's not going to be 19 in a row with the way the Zags are going this year. Silas Melson moving in. Underneath. Jonathan Williams, the putback. Did an excellent job by Williams just carving out space 
after gathering that rebound and getting to his jump hook. Zags are at 58% from the field tonight. As Marcus Shaver can't get the roll, but he'll get two free throws. Second foul on Killian Tilly. We're seeing Portland, Karan, be a little bit more aggressive here in the second half and looking to attack. For sure, and that's exactly what's required in order for them to stay competitive and make this continue to be a ball game down the stretch. Seven now for Shaver. Averaging nearly 11 points per game in league play. And he hits both. Shaver has a unique set of skills when you're talking about change of gears. He can go fast, a little faster, <laughs> and then he possessed the skill to go the fastest on the court at times. Diabate back in the game with four fouls. Tilly and Tilly going at him. And Tilly flips it up and in. 21 now for Tilly and Tilly. His fifth 20 point game of the season. Tilly just showing how fundamentally sound he actually is. The quick rip through, the spin off. That is a workout move at his finest. Third foul on Silas Nelson. Plus, Tilly knowing that Diabate has got to lay off playing with four fouls. That's exactly what it was. And the rip through, getting right to his spots where he's comfortable, spinning off the contact in the floater for two. Just, man, he's clicking on the offensive end. Diabate and the reach in on Jonathan Williams, his second foul. But again, we're seeing Portland drive. They get the ball and looking to attack. And they're getting they're picking up fouls against the Zex. Yeah, you cannot settle. You know, you gotta get to the paint and try to get some easy buckets and make things happen. You can't go for the home run plays just on the perimeter. That's Dick Swiggin. Foul, he'll go to the line. And now some Talking was going on, and Steve Olson, lead official here, will step in. Third foul on Jonathan Williams. And Josh McSwiggin, two of two at the line, will shoot two here. Seven points tonight for the sophomore. This week's NBA Saturday primetime, it could be a finals preview, could be. The best in the East right now against the best in the West. Kyrie and the Celtics battle Steph, KD, and the Warriors. Coverage tips at NBA Countdown at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. And always watch on the ESPN app as well. Swiggin hits both. A little bit of a smaller lineup now for Portland. Diabate. We'll go to the bench, still saddled with four fouls as both he and Hartwich are sitting down near the end of the bench. And foul difficulty. Roxy, you touched on it. Portland is extremely small now, so they're going to have to do an excellent job of boxing out. And Corey Kispert going right to the hoop. He has nine. And it's a Portland ball. They're trying to take advantage of not having a shot blocker in the game, and Kispert went right to the basket. Approaching 14 minutes to play. Number 15, Gonzaga, led from the outset, leading by as many as 20 tonight. Inside, and it's Joseph Smoyer with the bucket. Smoyer had not played in each of the last three games for Portland. He's definitely ready. He's extremely energetic on the defensive end and, you know, being active. And that's what you need from Smoyer. Tend to shoot for the Zags. Zach Norvell Jr. lines up the three. And the rebound run down by Corey Kispert and Gonzaga. Fresh shot clock. Inside to Rui Hachimura. 
Backs down to Marcus Tyson. And they're getting an offensive foul on Hachimura. His third. No, he just, Tyson just did a great job of just timing that, that block right there. You know, Hachimura did, did lean into him, and he timed it perfectly and got the offensive call. And then he sold it. Sold it. Oscar season. Inside 13 minutes now. The shot blocked as JoJo Walker went inside. Here come the Zags. Hachimura leads the break. Hits the trailer. Corey Kisper. Loose ball. Hustling is Josh Perkins. No look pass to Killian Tilly and a foul on Smoyer. And Tilly will go to the line. Nice feed by Josh Perkins, the look away, set it up. The Zags are really exhausting that pick and roll with Tilly or whether it's any of the guys at the four to five position playing the pick and roll with Perkins. They're diving right to the paint and taking advantage of that dive because no one is coming over tagging or stopping that roll man. 22 now for Tilly. His career high earlier this year was 27 against IUPUI. Got your 10 push-ups to get that. <laughs> is that a bet? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure if I can do 10 push-ups anymore. <laughs> Stepping in is Marcus Shaver. He missed everything. Seven to shoot, Hachimura steal. Races up the floor, and they're gonna get a double dribble against Rui Hachimura. It's been a rough night for Rui Hachimura. Who's played very well as of late. Double figures in nine straight for Hachimura coming in. In fact, Hachimura leads Gonzaga in scoring during conference play. He averages over 15 points a game in league play. Deep three. Too strong from Demarcus Tyson and Kisper clears for the Zags. It's like that, but you, you you have to think that Portland' point of emphasis was to slow him down, as you touched on, Roxy. He's leading them in conference play and scoring, so you know he's going to be the vocal point of the defensive end. And one, Corey Kisper again attacking the basket. Twenty-one point lead for Gonzaga, their largest of the night. And the Zags getting it done inside and outside tonight. Gonzaga rolling here in Portland. The 15th ranked Zags up 68-47 on the pilots. Look at the WCC scoreboard tonight. Also a big game going on down in the Bay Area as St. Mary's leading BYU in the second half in Moraga, McEwen Pavilion. USF squeaked one out against Pacific Tigers on the hilltop tonight in San Francisco. San Diego gets a much needed home win for Lamont Smith and the Toreros over Santa Clara. And a wild finish at Pepperdine tonight. And the Waves get their first conference win. And here's the final sequence. Colby Ross, the freshman at the line. Down two with four and a half seconds to go. Misses the free throw on the tip out. Trey Burhau wins it for Pepperdine. What a crazy sequence to end the game and get Marty Wilson and Pepperdine their first conference win. Hey, listen, I'm over here cheering for the Pepperdine Waves as well because I'm so happy that they was able to get a quality win, a first win in WCC play. So here's the updated standings. UOP in San Diego tied for fourth right now. The Broncos and USF tied for sixth place. And Portland, who's won two straight after beginning conference play at 0-6. And it's Corey Kispert, the and one free throw, and he has 12 off the bench. Much more assertive tonight than we've seen him in the last couple of ball games for Kispert. Now you see Gonzaga dropping back in the zone of their own. Porter Brothers on the floor with Tyson and Shaver, so four guards with Smoyer out there for Terry Porter. 
Shot clock at five. Corner three. And that's good from Franklin Porter, his first points tonight. Roxy, even though that shot looked like a prayer, it may, it may have been, he's more than capable of making those shots on a consistent basis. Here's Hachimura trying to get on track. Nelson on the move. Silas Melson rattles out the three, and a foul on Kispert going for the rebound. Because he got a piece of Smoyer, and it's the second on Corey Kispert. Smoyer is doing an excellent job inside, you know, for Portland. Just fighting, just giving the quality minutes that's needed. Like we said, you know, he dust the dust off the Nikes and ran on in there, and no one knew what to expect from him, but he's definitely giving him that much-needed spark. And they need the minutes from Smoyer because with Diabate and Hartwich on the bench, four fouls. And Smoyer, who's now 7 of 10 at the line on the year. Sophomore from Portland. He's played sparingly this year. Now with three points. And the rebound, Tillett. Tilly on the baseline off the feet, a pretty pass from Zach Norvell. His, his touch is just extremely clever around the paint. You know, he has the float game. He can pull you out a little bit, and he possesses the, the mid-range game as well. Soft touch, incredible to watch. Marcus Shaver, the teardrop. Marcus Shaver, First pilot into double figures tonight. He's got 10. Ravel had it stripped out of bounds. It stays with Gonzaga. Tight one going on down in the Bay Area between St. Mary's and BYU. And Gonzaga's had this one pretty well in hand from the outset tonight. Jumped on Portland early and never really let the Pilots back into the game. Kispert off the inbound and one. And Lee getting over to Marcus Tyson just picked up his third foul. Kispert doing a little flexing here. Finishing with the contact and showing the guns. That was an excellent job. You know, the coaches always, that's a teaching point. When you set the screen and set a good one, you're usually the guy that's going to get open. And that's exactly what happened right there. Kisper set the screen, hoping to get a teammate open, slipped right to the basket, and was able to get the easy two and convert it on the foul line for the three-point play. And Kispert is tied at career high of 15. He had 15 back in November right here in Portland against Florida at the PKA. Something about playing in Portland. It's comfortable for Kispert as a three from the corner for Malcolm Porter. Both of Terry Porter's sons have hit threes here in the last couple of minutes. It's Tilling. What a play by Killian Tillich. What did the athleticism from Tillich going up and to direct that one to the hoop with contact. And he's tied at career high with 27. Look at the engagement from the sideline, the players on the bench. You know, he's he going up there and grabbing that with his left hand. And and it could have easily went out of bounds. It was overthrown a little bit. Tilly got a handle of it and was able to finish for the two with the contact. Missed the free throw. He's now four of seven at the line tonight. Zags by 20. 9.35 to go. He's led by as many as 21. Gonzaga shooting 59% from the floor. There's 67% in the second half, but they're all five outside the arc in the second half as Josh Perkins called for the foul. Gonzaga foul number 13, Josh Perkins. One and one for Malcolm Porter. See Coach Porter on the sideline encouraging that, that, that aggressive play. You know, telling you know his son Porter to, 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 to drive. You know, Malcolm drive the basketball and get into the paint. And that's exactly what happened. He created the contact. And good things happen. You're either going to get the contact, get the foul, and keep your, your team in the bonus and get to the foul line and you have an opportunity to put some points on the scoreboard. Tilly the rebound. He has seven boards along with those career high time 27 points. 
That's the thing about when you match up with Gonzaga, they have so many people that can hurt you. Now a career high, 18 for Corey Kispert. They're so balanced, they're so deep, and they're so tough, Karan, to defend. And everyone's buying into the, the sharing this caring thing on the offensive end. Equal opportunity sets. You know, they don't overlook you. If you got it going, they're going to find you. There you go again. Looking for Kispert in the flow. Silas Nelson from downtown. And they're willing to make, everybody's willing to make the extra pass. I may have a good shot, but you have a better one, and I'll get the ball to you. That's winning basketball, and winning basketball is fun basketball. Fun basketball is contagious. Zags up 25 on the road. So impressive to watch them offensively. Tilly going up and finishing for the strong two. I see you, young fella. Killian Tilly asserting himself on the offensive end tonight. A career high time, 27 for the sophomore from France. You know, this, this segment is called In My Bag because that's exactly what you see Tilly doing. Hitting face up game. Talking about diving with the slippage of the pick and roll, the acrobatic catches, getting to his spot, the spin moves, shooting over two defenders. A jack of all trades. He is 11 of 14 from the floor tonight. I guess the only negative for Killian Tilly, he's four of seven at the line. He's hit a three. He's sharing the ball, he's got two assists. 18 assists for the Zags as a team tonight. And they're up by 25, their largest lead. Inside eight and a half minutes to go. Marcus Tyson spinning in the lane. And the rebound, there's Jonathan Williams for the Zags. Gonzaga's won the last 10 meetings between these two teams, rather nine meetings between these two teams, going for their 10th tonight as Jakob Larson goes inside and Philip Hartwich with his four fouls challenged the shot. But under Mark Few, Gonzaga is 36 and two against Portland. That doesn't surprise me not one bit. Uh, just because I'm, I'm thinking about the flow and the mindset of Coach Few and what he demands and requires you know, on the road with these guys. Josh Perkins with 11. Going back the other way to miss by Malcolm Porter. Out of bounds. It stays with Portland as Corey Kisberg is at the line. 84-57, Gonzaga rolling here in Portland. One single day, two power conferences, 10 games with new stars, familiar legends, and epic matchups, all for bragging rights. The Big 12 SEC Challenge on ESPN this Saturday. Big 12 SEC Challenge coming up, highlighted by Oklahoma and Alabama. Two sensational freshmen, Trey Young, Colin Sexton going at it with all the accolades, not just for Trey Young, but he also for DeAndre Ayton at Arizona, Marvin Bagley. Colin Sexton deserves to be in that conversation as well. Yeah, you talk about his explosiveness and his quickness and being at that size, it's gonna be one heck of a matchup because one being 6'2", the other being 6'3", they both possess unique skills on the offensive end of the floor. Can't wait to see that. Alan Jakob Larson of Gonzaga. Richard freshman from Denmark. Franklin Porter will shoot two as the pilots are in the double bonus now. Three points tonight for Franklin Porter, who began his college career at St. Mary's, playing for Randy Bennett. And then when Dad got the job here at Portland, he transferred back up here, where he's from, because he wanted to play for Dad. Began his high school career at Jesuit High School here in Portland. It's amazing just seeing Coach Porter on the sideline and, you know, helping and continuing to develop, you know, your sons on the fly. That guy, that has to be amazing for him. Now, you just missed playing against him, right? 
Yeah, I just missed mine. I, I don't want to tell his age, but I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did have a 17-year NBA career. His number is retired by the Blazers. As the rebound secured by Philip Hartwich for the Pilots. We're inside seven minutes to go. Malcolm Porter. Philip Hartwich gives the Pilots a second chance. And Perkins called for a foul. Third on Josh Perkins. And it's JoJo Walker to the stripe for the Pilots. JoJo Walker. But he was coaching in the NBA when you were playing. Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, I think he was at the, the Bucks at the time. Or he was a head coach in Milwaukee, also with Phoenix. Yeah. It's Walker now three of four at the line. Just a just an all around just great person. You know, every time I see Coach Porter, whether it was in competition or just in, you know, passing. He would always give me a jewel and just give me information that was priceless. And, you know, those are the seeds that you love, you know, being planted by, you know, figures in the community. Plus the two of you had that Wisconsin connection. Absolutely. Corey Kispert gets his own miss. And a kick out with a fresh shot clock. Now he stayed and went to a smaller school, Wisconsin. You got out <laughs> for school. Hey, look, I, I wasn't a fan of the Four Seasons uh, anymore, and especially playing in you know negative temperatures. So I had to get out of there. Although stores Connecticut probably not balmy this time of the year either. It wasn't that cold though. Wisconsin cold is different. <laughs> when that hawk come off Lake Michigan, that's a different cold right there. <laughs> and the officials are going to the monitor and. Philip Hartwich was fouled out. He fouls out here with 6.07 to play. He fouls out with nine points. And Hartwich also called for a technical. On top of picking up the personal foul, you can see some blood on the right elbow with the tape job there on. Philip Hartwich, who's heading into the locker room, uh, he's wondering if he's been tossed from the game, which he just got a technical, he wasn't ejected. And you can probably assume he said something to the officials that he shouldn't have said. Yeah, he's still a little frustrated on the sideline right now, and you know, he's bleeding, and, and you know, probably letting his emotions get the best of him right now. And, it's, I, I know it's tough, you know, being at home and, you know, um, not being able to finish the game as you would like. And, you know, being beat right now, down 26, you know, at home, it, it has to be extremely deflated. So Melson hits the two technical free throws, and now Kispert shooting the personal foul free throws. Kispert now three of four at the line. A career high 19 off the bench for the freshman tonight as Josh McSwiggin comes back for the Pilots. I'm going to tell you who's not frustrated, though. I'm looking at Kispert, and he got a smile from ear to ear every time he scores a point. And it's a welcome sight for Mark Few and his staff. We look at his assistants, Tommy Lloyd, Brian Michaels, and Donnie Daniels over there that Kispert had been scoreless in each of the last two games. And now he found his offensive game again. And I'm a thousand percent sure that every time in those possess possessions in, in the game where he went scoreless, he still played the right way. And that's why Coach Few is rewarding him with more time right now, and he's having a career night. The basketball guys always reward you back. Somehow, some way, it and happened. And a 28-point lead for Gonzaga. Yep, not much for Mark Few to be upset about tonight. His team has played well at both ends of the floor. 58% for the field. They've hit 10 threes, limiting Portland of 42%. It's Tahiro Diabate gets his first point of the night. Saturday at ESPN, it's the fifth annual Big 12 SEC Challenge. Trey Young leads number 12 Oklahoma against Bama. 
at 2.15 at AM and number five Kansas from Fog Allen Fieldhouse at 4.30. Saturday primetime from Morgantown as Kentucky takes on number seven, West Virginia. All three games are available on the ESPN app as well. Diabate hits both free throws. He was only a 46% foul shoot before that trip and a foul against Portland. Second on Marcus Shaver. And Gonzaga to the line. 19 fouls, so still a one and one. As Jonathan Williams will head to the line, who's been quiet tonight. But frankly, Gonzaga hasn't really needed him to step up. And, 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 and that's what's so amazing about the Zags is that you may see guys like Perkins or, you know, uh, Melson or Williams or whoever may get into a rhythm, and they're okay with that. You know, they're still celebrating. It's, it's all, it, it all goes back to Coach Mark Few and the culture that he created there at the university. You see every guy from the beginning of the bench to the end of the bench still engaged, clapping on the sideline, and, and, and that's winning basketball. I wonder if he was saying to Steve Olsen, the official, just walking up to him, hey, i got to act like I'm talking to you about something. i got nothing to complain about tonight. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he probably did that at some point in this game because everything seems to be going right for him. Jakob Larson <laughs> called for his third. But Gonzaga on their way to their 20th consecutive road conference win here tonight in Portland. Career high tying 27 from Killian Tilly. Corey Kispert, by the way, in addition to a career high 20 points, has a double double because he also has 10 rebounds. I can, I can easily see Coach Few walking up, you know, to Steve or Courtney Holmes over there and just telling them, you know, hey, hey, where are you golf at, man? Let's, let's keep the conversation going. I got to complain about something. <laughs> just, just, just kick it off with something because it seems like they're just clicking on all cylinders offensively and defensively. First appearance tonight for Jesse Wade for Gonzaga. Freshman from Kaysville, Utah. He just actually returned, was on an LDS mission for two years after originally signing with the Zags. Oh. 2014 is Silas Nelson. The exclamation point on this one. And you know how much that meant to him, Roxy, being home, being able to flush one like that and smile. Marcus Tyson just hitting a three for the Pilots. His second three tonight. He has 226 for his Portland career, his second all-time in threes. A drop off. As Jeremy Jones gets it to Jalen Williams, who is looking for a foul call. First appearance for Jones, the junior from San Antonio, the transfer from Rice. Marcus Shaver has it stripped. Here comes Jeremy Jones leading the break. Jonathan Williams missed the runner. And now Mark Few saying, hey, my guy was fouled. So maybe he does have something to be talking about with the officials. As Marcus Shaver hits a three for the pilots. That's a clear case of right there, not, you know, Calling that call probably just because of the game and the floor of the game and letting, letting them play a little bit. Here's Jones, the former quarterback at Rice before transferring to Gonzaga. Kispert from deep. 23 points for Corey Kispert tonight. Don Zagan now with 11 threes. Terrific performance here in Portland tonight for number 15, Don Zagan. Never rattled. Corner three from Marcus Shaver. He leads Portland now with 16. Eight threes for the Pilots tonight. Jeremy Jones goes baseline. Kispert, another one. This one falls off, but Jonathan Williams, the offensive rebound. Jesse Wade, way off on that three, and Tahiro Diabate, the rebound. And a block on Silas Nelson, his fourth. 
This one all Gonzaga in Portland. The Zags looking for win number 18. Nelson driving the lane right here, going up for two hands. Look, Ma, no hands. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Naturally refreshing. Look at Powell's Bookstore here in downtown Portland. With number 15, Gonzaga, rolling through the Rose City tonight. Up 22 in the pilots, leading by as many as 28 in the ball game. As Gonzaga will head home, they'll take on USF coming up Saturday at the Kennel. While the pilots, you want to talk about a tough week? They got Gonzaga tonight, then they travel down to the Bay Area to deal with St. Mary's. Ooh, a heck of a Thank you, schedule makers. It's <laughs> a heck of a trip. Well, this year, with the, with the different schedule in the WCC, because they did away with the travel partners this year, so you're not necessarily guaranteed to have two consecutive road games or two consecutive home games. It's all mixed up this year. St. Mary's pulling away and knocking off BYU, 75-62. So the Gales remain undefeated in conference play. And a Gonzaga win here will keep them a game behind St. Mary's in the rematch between these two teams in Moraga, February 10th. That's definitely one, Roxy, to circle on the calendar. You know, so St. Mary's being able to steal one against the Zags at home on their home court. And you know the Zags would love to return the favor. Oh, yeah. Competition at its finest. And Rashad Jackson in the lineup replacing Rico Diamante, Josh McSwiggin, Joshua Walker, and Marcus Shane Jr. Terry Porter gets Rashad Jackson in for the first time, the junior from Bakersfield. Also in for Gonzaga is Jack Beach, a walk on from San Diego. And a reach in on Rashad Jackson. And here's Beach a chance to get some points. He's 2-2 two -two at the line this year. Playing in his 11th game already for Gonzaga. And he had both those free throws made against Portland the first time around. At the Torrey Pines High School. And he gets that one to fall off. So Mark Few will... They'll head home tonight, regroup, and focus on the USF Dons coming up on Saturday as Beach Miss both. But a real strong performance on the road tonight here in Portland for Gonzaga. 20 consecutive road conference wins. And a foul, it's on Beach going for the rebound. Here's what's upcoming for the Zags. And San Diego and BYU before hitting the road back-to-back -back games in Northern California against Damon Stoudemire's UOP Tigers and then the rematch with St. Mary's. No, no easy wins right there. Like, you look at that schedule, you know, with San Diego, BYU, Pacific, you know, Damon Stoudemire got them playing exceptionally well. St. Mary's, you know, and just because you're the Zags and you're, you, you have been the standard in the WCC forever, you know, Forever is a long time when you take four out of it. You know, you say forever. And, and, <laughs> At least and for being, a long time. Yeah, and, and being the, the standard for a long time as that, you have a bullseye on your back as a program. You're going to get everybody's best shot. Corey Kispert. That one rattles out on the rebound. Franklin Porter. But it's always tough also for Gonzaga as the floater by Malcolm Porter because... You're always the game that's circled. When they, the schedule comes out, you're the game that's circled in everybody's calendar. You're going to get their best shot night in, night out. You are. It, you, you know, you're playing with a bullseye on your back as a program, and, you know, that's what's been extremely impressive about the Zags. They never cease to amaze by their preparation. And we've seen that in the shooter rounds, Roxy. We, we come in, they, they're, they're preparing, preparing the same way every time. 
you know, one of the most focused, involved, all-in shoot-arounds that I've seen on the collegiate level. Spirited shoot-arounds as Jeremy Jones misses the first. And here's a nice hand for a local kid from Southridge High School here in Portland is Brian Peet. A walk-on comes in for Gonzaga. And he's a former student manager for the Zags as Brian Peet then was activated to the roster by Mark Few and they had some injuries early in the season. They needed another body. And so they took him from being a manager to now being a player on this team. And as a walk-on and rewarded to get some minutes here in his hometown. When you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. It must be an amazing feeling to return home and, you know, be able to get some quality minutes down the stretch. Happy for the kid. Oh, the bench was mad at him. He was open. He didn't shoot it. And then Wade throws it away. But Brian Pete had a wide open look. Everybody on the bench was screaming, shoot it, shoot it. And then they were screaming at him when he didn't. Pete, let it fly, young fella. One minute, less than one minute. Final minute here at the Child Center. Demarcus Tyson missing a three, and the rebound kicked out of bounds by Jeremy Jones, and it goes back to Portland. So Portland will fall to 8-14, and 14 and the brief two-game winning streak will come to an end. They'll fall to 2-7 and seven in the WCC. The Zags go 8-1 and one in league play as you look at the standings, and they are updated, assuming that with 44.6 to go, we can safely say Gonzaga is going to win this game. Oh, yeah, we can safely say that. <laughs> <laughs> it took you a second to go there. Hey, so. my, my folks watching, Roxy, I got to keep them tuned in. <laughs> One more for Demarcus Tyson. And he now has 15 points. I really want Pete to get another opportunity to score the basketball. Jeremy Jones and a foul with 36.1 to go. It's an offensive foul on Jones. He was called for the charge. 16 point lead. You're telling him to shoot, aren't you? <laughs> yes. Nine straight for the Pilots to make it a 16-point game, but the game really isn't this close. And Gonzaga now will run out the clock. So Gonzaga will go to 18 and four, eight and one of the WCC. 20 consecutive road conference wins for Mark Few and Gonzaga. Now Portland falls to eight and 14, two and seven in the league. But the Zags come on the road. They've beaten Portland now 10 straight times. In fact, Gonzaga has also won 21 of the last 22 games here at Portland with a score that looks a lot closer than the game actually was. Really, I mean, it was just amazing to see them come in with the same disposition as they do every game and still be able to keep the momentum in their favor for the entire game, hanging, hanging their hat on the defensive end on the floor and not the offensive end of the floor. So the final score, 95-79. Gonzaga now 37-2 under Mark Few against Portland. Killian Tilly, a career-high tie, 27. Corey Kispert, a career-high 23 to lead Gonzaga tonight. My partner, Karan Butler, and a great ESPN crew, Roxy Bernstein, saying so long from Portland. Zags 95, Portland 79. Good night to the Rose City.